Namaste everyone! So in this video we are going to talk about the next nakshatra, nakshatra called Swati. So Swati is the nakshatra which is placed in the very heart of Sidereal Libra, which is an airy sign. And Swati nakshatra itself is also of airy nature. More than that, it's ruled by Vayudev, the wind god. So naturally also the natives who have significant placements in Swati nakshatra will be sharing also the nature of Vayu, the nature of wind god himself. And of course, what's the nature of the wind? Wind is movable, it moves around left and right, it's creative, it loves its freedom. And naturally people also who are impacted by this lunar mansion will also be like this. So first very interesting quality about Swati Nakshatra is, is that naturally Vayu or the wind god, he does not represent only the air element around us. He also does represent the air element within us, the breath itself. And this is one really interesting thing because you may notice that Swati Nakshatra is one of the most prone lunar mansions to develop any issues with breathing, such as asthma or sleep apnea or shortness of the breath. Which is why actually regular practice of a pranayama, the breathing exercise, very often happens to be the very key to health of natives who have prominent placement in this lunar mansion. Naturally, since wind is the Arab element which always moves around, it loves its freedom. And for Swati Nakshatra natives, also their freedom, their independence is one of their key priorities, one of their key qualities, which is something also useful for you to understand in case any of your loved ones happens to have prominent placement in this lunar mansion. Because it's important to understand that this native, this person will most likely have much bigger need for freedom, for independence, uh, doing things on his own, not always along with you, than anybody else. And this is very vital, you know, to understand. Naturally, due to their strong need for freedom, strong need for independence, you may notice that Swati natives can be a little eccentric sometimes, in a good way or in a bad way, you know. Definitely Swati Nakshatra natives can be quite out of the box thinkers due to that. They like to do things differently, but sometimes they like to do things differently just for the sake of doing it differently. Just so they don't need to agree with everyone else, just so they can go against the stream which is not always perfectly healthy. So if you are yourself Swati Nakshatra native, you might also like to observe this quality within you and just check whether really you know this need sometimes for doing things differently, independently. Does it really come, you know, just from a pure and genuine sense of freedom? Or does it come perhaps from misunderstood sense of freedom? from a misunderstood sense of freedom that makes you feel that if you do something differently than everybody else, you will somehow prove yourself to be more special than everybody else. Because naturally these need can be also hidden down there. We can't forget that after all Swati Nakshatra is also the place where sun is debilitated. Sun representing our individuality, our independence, our confidence. And because of that, natives with prominent placement in this lunar mansion may sometimes, you know, be eccentric just to prove themselves, just to, you know, show off a little bit, almost. Now, because of that, and because of this misunderstood sense of freedom, sometimes Swati Nakshatra natives, you know, can be too much indulging into sensory pleasures as well. 
generally because it is lunar mansion which is airy in nature, is very movable, it's at the heart of Sideria Libra, which is a Venusian sign. Naturally, these natives often have many desires, you know. They love beauty, they love luxury, they like when things look good, smell good, taste good, right? And sometimes, of course, there might be this misconception in their mind that freedom is just following every single desire that you have, following every single idea that you have without ever questioning them. But from Vedic perspective, that's not really freedom. Because true freedom is when you can have a choice whether to pursue that desire or not, whether to go after that sensory pleasure or not. Otherwise, it's not really freedom, but just being enslaved towards your mind's own desires and every single idea that comes to your mind. Which is why naturally, because it's also the nakshatra ruled by Rahu, one very, very good things and very good practice for those natives is that whenever you have any desire, any longing, and whenever you know you have any idea in your mind, no matter how brilliant it seems, just postpone it, delay it. Come back to it in a few days and see if you still feel the same way about it. Especially if it's actually an important, let's say, life decision which might require some of your work. Because Swati Nakshatra is also unfortunately a little bit known of its inconsistency. It tends to start things and not always finish them just because this initial passion and desire that was there in the beginning does not always continue throughout the process. So if you want to be a little bit more productive and spare yourself some unnecessary maybe hours of work, before you pursue any idea, delay it and see if you feel the same about it after a few days. Swati Nakshatra is also known to be one of the most creative lunar mansions. Especially when it comes to visual arts, you will find great designers, great painters with this nakshatra. And of course, you know, if we think about it from perspective of wind god, actually, and air element, air element is known to be one of the most creative elements. And in fact, even if you look on the sky, you know how air, how wind is constantly changing and shaping the clouds, you can see that creativity even in nature. And similarly, because of this special combination of energies of Venus, which is energy of creativity, and Rahu, which is the energy of out-of-the-box thinking, very often Swati Nakshatra natives can be the best people to come up with some creative solution and especially make something beautiful. And of course, naturally, because of this combination of Rahu and Venus energies, in Swati Nakshatra itself, Swati Nakshatra natives are often also the best people to find an out-of-the-box solution. When you find yourself in a situation that you think there is no solution or there are very limited solutions, Swati natives can see more possibilities because they always think out of the box. They always want to do things differently. And this is actually where this Nakshatra truly shines because it gives these natives a possibility to always see things differently. Again, sometimes it can be a little bit problematic quality, especially when those natives get interested, you know, in esoteric sciences like astrology or spiritual path. They sometimes, you know, have the tendency to, I would say, bend the rules so it suits their ego's agenda a little bit more, so they don't need to necessarily change. So, of course, this Rahu's quality, if it's not controlled well, if it's not channeled well, can be also dangerous and lead to misconceptions. But most of the time, especially in material life, this quality of looking at things differently can be greatly helpful in finding out-of-the-box solutions. Now, not everyone knows this, but the consort of Vayudev, the wind god, is known as Bharati, who is the expansion of goddess Sarasvati. She is the goddess of sacred arts and creativity, of course, which is also where the creativity of Swati Nakshatra comes from. 
but she is also above the all, the goddess of sacred wisdom and knowledge. Which is why you will notice that Swati natives, they always look to learn more. You know, they are always curious to learn more. They have this curiosity in life. And they always search for something more. They search for some deep in, deeper meaning. You see, the very name Saraswati is very interesting because Sara means the essence. So Saraswati is the goddess of essence, the goddess who searches for essence of everything. And even the word Saraswati and Swati is actually somehow similar. So this is also where this curiosity and this desire to learn more about life in general comes from in Swati Nakshatra natives. And this gives a quality that can be especially helpful for them in their social interactions. Because Swati natives, when they talk to you, when they interact with you, they are actually genuinely curious about you. Now, air element is naturally, you know, the element of exchange. And this is why social interactions play a huge role in the lives of Swati Nakshatra natives. They are curious about other people, they like to interact with other people, and of course the shadow side of that can sometimes be that they may also easily get bored if they are with the same people all the time. This is why when Swati Nakshatra natives are even in long-term you know, committed relationship, what is very important for them is to from time to time, you know, have this time when they can just go out with friends, with somebody else, meet new people, because it's very stimulating for them. And you will notice that especially when Swati Nakshatra has anything to do with uh, one's work, workplace, so like 10th house or 10th floor, then very often these natives even perform better when they are in more stimulating environments, even if they work for themselves. For example, if they go to a cafe, you know, and they drink their coffee there, and they are surrounded, you know, by these more stimulating vibrations around them. So, of course, naturally, Swati Nakshatra, due to being, you know, governed by such a changeable element, they need stimulation, they need change in life, of course, implemented in a very healthy way in order to perform good. And they need social interactions, they need actually other people. It supports them, it helps them. It's supportive for how their mind functions. Now, as you can imagine, one of the biggest shadow sides of Swati Nakshatra is its changeability. Air element is very fast, very changeable element. It performs well in fast-paced environments. This is why, you know, those natives can perform really well in creative fields or even in things like marketing, even in business, in fact. So they can experience, you know, this constant stimulation and exchange of energy, you could say. But of course, the shadow part of Swati Nakshatra is that due to this changeable nature of theirs, they can sometimes be a little unstable when it comes to their ideas and their implementation. Because from the moment when the idea appeared in their mind until the moment the idea is actually implemented, they may already change their mind. So, of course, from that perspective, Swati Nakshatra can be challenging. And working especially in very dull and boring environments or doing works which are very repetitive and not stimulating in nature is something that will most likely not really work for Swati Nakshatra natives. But one thing that we can't forget about Swati Nakshatra is that it dwells in the very heart of Sidereal Libra. What is the sign of Libra all about? Well, it's very simple, are the scales. So it's all about seeking balance and finding balance. And consciously or not, Swati Nakshatra natives, they always search for balance in their life. They're always looking to it, towards it. Unfortunately, sometimes because of this underlying flavor of Rahu, they tend to go to extremes, you know? They firstly go to one extreme, then to another, until they figure out that they actually need balance. They need balance, for example, in social interactions as well, because if they're overly stimulated, it doesn't work for them either. 
even in the relationships, you know, they need just the right amount of freedom and the right, right amount of bondage. If it's too little or too much, it doesn't work for them. So from that perspective, sometimes Swati Nakshatra, you know, initially, especially until the person reaches the first Saturn return, can feel a little frustrating because you may feel like you don't really know what's good for you, what's supportive for you. And that's because you might be too much into trying the different extremes rather than trying to find a balance. Balance is the key for this lunar mansion and finding the right amount of everything in your life. So due to their changeable nature, naturally, Swati Nakshatra natives can be quite impatient as well. And this is also among their primary shadow qualities. They can be quite impulsive, you know, very quickly the ideas arise within them, very quickly the feelings arise within them, but they also quickly settle down. And they can very quickly convert from passion to boredom. And this is, again, if they don't know yet, if they didn't learn yet how to regulate themselves and their desires and emotions and creative urges in life, it can look, you know, quite extreme, like going from one extreme to another again. This is why, once again, with this lunar mansion, because it has so much of energy of Rahu, the key thing is learn how to regulate your feelings, desires, emotions, creativity by postponing things, delaying them. This will help you a lot to control this impatience and impulsiveness, because otherwise it's good to be aware that this nakshatra also, if it's not regulated well, can be quite prone with certain placements for developing addictions as well. And of course, among the most noticeable traits of Swati nakshatra is their sensitivity for beauty and their search for beauty. They always look, you know, for beautiful things and they have usually an extremely good sense of taste. Sometimes a little eccentric, sometimes can be a little bit out of the box, but usually you can trust them quite well when it comes to choosing just the right things for anything. They just have this amazing, you know, sense of taste, amazing, you know, perceptibility of beauty. Of course, the shadow side of it is that sometimes they can get a little materialistic, a little bit too focused on the external side of things, which is, to a big extent, a shadow side of sidereal Libra in general. We've seen it also in Chitra Nakshatra, we will see it also in Vishaka, that sometimes they focus too much on this external side of things. And through that, they can become materialistic as well. And these very often eventually can make them quite unhappy because, of course, the material world has its limit. And the more you try to cling on it and attach yourself to it, and the more you focus on it, the more it drains you and your life force. This is why, sadly, very often Swati natives, the moment when they start to search for spirituality in a more serious way, is when they experience problems in life very often health issues. This is when they start to turn towards spirituality very often. This is when they start to look beyond what material world has to offer them because most likely they already exhausted the possibilities. So in short, that's Swati Nakshatra. These are its qualities. If you are curious to learn more about Swati Nakshatra, more about the mythology, of Vayu, the wind god who presides over this lunar mansion, and what else can you learn from it, you are most welcome to also see the already recorded lesson on Swati Nakshatra, which is a part of bigger Nakshatra course, quite a long course, which you can find on my academy. You will see all the links for that below. So I thank you so much for watching and I see you next time. Namaste.